when cash is king. This company is on guard. But Brinks rolls out more services than just their iconic trucks. With the stock stalled after a key acquisition, can Brinks help keep your portfolio safe? After a huge rally, sometimes the stock will pause for a breather while it digests its gains. What is the recent trajectory of the Brinks Company, BCO for you home gamers, the cash management business that you most likely recognize from its big armored cars? At the end of May, Brinks announced that it's buying Dunbar Armor, one of their main competitors, and the stock rocketed up 16% on the news. It, you know what? In a nice surprise, that deal just closed today. I think it could be an upward catalyst for a stock that's been trading sideways, even as the company reported a blowout quarter at the end of July. Just a terrific top and bottom line beat. So let's take a closer look with Doug Perch. He's the president and CEO of the Brinks Company, who's created a tremendous amount of value here in his two years as CEO. Get a better sense of where his company's headed now that the Dunbar deal has closed. Mr. Perch, welcome to Man money. Good to see you, sir. Thanks, Jim. Pleasure to be here. Well, first of all, congratulations. This is a very huge deal. I did not think it was going to close today, so we got a nice bit of surprise. What's it mean for the company? Well, it's exciting because it's a great company, that is Dunbar, right. combining with a great business in Brinks. 90 years plus of three generations of Dunbar, right. a great reputation with employees, great reputation with customers combining with Brinks. We're excited as can be about that. We think with the combination, we'll create great value for our shareholders as well as great value for our customers. Right, you'll be number one That's right. in cash management. Will you keep both names? Uh, we will see where that goes, but chances are it will migrate to a single name. Synergies? There will be significant synergies. We've already talked about cost synergies in the press release we just put out uh, yes, this evening. We, we read those again. So cost synergies are very significant over the next two to three years. Uh, 40 to 45 million in cost synergies, which are very significant on a business of this size. Now, you know we got involved and started recommending your stock when we saw that there was, a, a, there was an inflection. We couldn't figure it out. It was actually yes. your management came in and what you've done. Tell us how you managed to get the growth here for a company that's been around since the Civil War. That's great. 160 plus years. You're exactly right. Great brand in the business. And I think uh, the company didn't have the leadership, uh, the focus, uh, the strategies in place that were probably needed. Uh, I'm very pleased that I had the opportunity to, to come in and be able to uh, work with the management. We have a great management team that's done a great job and really rose to the challenge, if you will, that we are in now. Put a new strategy together, which we rolled out uh, March of last year. Uh, and we've been aggressively implementing, executing on that strategy, and you see the results. The results oh. are 30 plus percent growth on the operating income for the last six to eight quarters. No, it's been terrific. I think one of the uh, misperceptions, and I shared it too because I'm so close to the visas and the MasterCards. Yeah. I like that, hey, we're going toward a cashless society. Well, it turns out that it's not just that plastic is doing uh, well, but cash is doing better in some ways. The growth's amazing. The, the, the growth is great in cash, and it has been for <laughs> years. Can it be? Last year, cash in circulation in the U.S. alone was 6%. That's 6% on top of at least 5% growth over the last 20 years. And what that means, in fact, as an investor, I'd sit and say, well, what does that mean to me? Well, that's better growth, substantially better growth than GDP. And if I can get a business invested in that's substantially higher than GDP growth, it makes a heck of a lot of sense to do that. But you know, one of the big things, Jim, that's very interesting about this, our competitors, as you're suggesting, in the digital, you know, the fintech space, are the ones that come back and say, cash is good. It is growing. Right. It's going to be there for quite a while. Right. In fact, PayPal have said two things. One of them is when they're asking in an interview, who's your biggest competitor? Cash. Dan always 85 says that. Dan of total payments always globally says cash. are cash. Yep. That's a good example. Now, one of the things that shocked me when I go over your numbers is that Mexico's gigantic for you. It is. Why? It's growing very nicely. Well, there's two reasons for that. One of them, and the biggest macro, is, is that it's very much of a cash-driven society. Right. Uh, on a global basis, cash is 80 to 85%. In Mexico, it's probably 90 plus percent. Oh. So it's very cash-driven from that standpoint. Second is that from our standpoint as a company, it had been undermanaged, and we didn't have a good relationship with the unions that we work with down there. Since then, we've developed a great relationship over this two years as part of our strategic plan process with Mexico, specific initiatives to reinvest mm -hmm. as well as to work with the unions there uh, to develop better strategies and better directions, and it's working. It's working very well. Top line growth is double digits, yeah, and great. then on top of that, we've almost doubled our margins over that period of time. I think it's important because you guys bring it up. Uh, we have a lot of news about currencies today. Uh, it looks like that Argentina has continued along this progression that you don't, that's not necessarily good for the company, but you keep saying, don't worry, it's not going to, this 
is the, up to interest rates are 45 percent now. But you're OK on that kind of thing. Well, Jim, what we need to remember, all these things that we see about FX rates and right. how the, a lot of the uh, developing economies are in tough position on it, we are a translational FX risk. That's it, not transactional. Right. Not transactional. We're not related to what the cost of plastics or, or, or petroleum or anything else is. And all of our businesses are local. So the local right. business, whether it be in Argentina or Mexico, our costs are local, our pricing is local, right. and it's all based on that. Argentina has been high <laughs> inflation for years. Right. Uh, for years. We know how to operate it. They know how to operate it. The structure's in place as inflation goes up in the country. Right. Uh, the pricing goes up along with that and the structure fits along with it. All so right. we're very comfortable with that. All right, last question, uh, cannabis. We know that the banking system is not really equipped to handle all these stores that are opening up. We've had a bunch of these people on. Some of these places are doing $10 million per unit. Mm -hmm. They can't afford to keep that cash overnight. But I know you want to go only where it's legal, but yes, that sir. is a totally cash-based retail business, isn't it? It, it's very much, I wouldn't say it's totally, but it's very <laughs> it's highly very, cash. They have ATM and we, and we all over the place. <laughs> but I think what's important about this is we as Brinks, both domestically, other countries, and globally, we're in the best position. We're the largest player globally right. as in high-value transportation. Right. That's one piece on it. The second piece on it is the cash piece. We're in the best position for that as well. So I think a good test of this will be in Canada. Right. Uh, Canada is talking about a lot of, uh, well, it's going uh, right. on a national basis. And you'll be ready. To be, it will, and we'll be ready, and we'll be, we're talking with some of the largest players there today to manage all of their deliveries as well as their cash management of that. Well, I think that this Dunbar closing is going to be the catalyst that is needed. This is one growth company. After many years, one of the oldest companies we follow, and it's a growth one. That's Doug Percy. He's the CEO of Brinks BCO. Boy, I like this story. Mad Money's back after the break. Booyah! Jim Cramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.